are a local church with a global assignment. You are now stepping in to one of the most cutting edge ministries on the planet. It's a warehouse. It's a storehouse. It's God's house. This is an experience that is going to blow your mind. Hey, everybody, God bless you. I'm Elder Ron Saylor, and tonight I want to welcome you to the men's locker room. Let me tell you, this is going to be a night that's going to help you reboot for the rest of your year. Tonight, our talking topic is going to be third quarter strategies inside the locker room. We're in the third quarter of the year. The first two thirds of it are done, but you still have enough time to change your strategy, to rearrange your approach, to do some things different and accomplish every goal that you set out to achieve at the beginning of the year. And tonight, I've got some special friends who are going to help you be energized and help you strategize to find some success. Now, let me tell you what I need you to do. I need you to put your hands on the keyboard of whatever electronic device you are using. And at the bottom, I need you to type, I'm in the locker room. That's all you got to type. Let us know you're here from what state? Texas, from California, from New England, from Florida. Of course, I see ATL, Georgia, wherever you're from. I need you to put your hands on the chat right now and just say, I'm in the locker room and let us know what state you're in. I want you to make sure that before this evening is over, you get connected with our ministry. You send us an email, men at newbirth.org. We'll send you back all you need to get connected to the men in this great church. On behalf of Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant and all of the New Birth family, I want you to get your towel, throw on your sneakers, and get ready to take some instructions in the locker room. You thought I was worth saving So you came and changed my life You thought I was worth keeping You cleaned me up inside You thought I was to die for You sacrificed your life So I could be free So I could be whole so I can tell everyone I know You thought I was worth you, you thought So you came to change oh, my life You thought I was worth You thought I was worth keeping today yeah. Oh, so oh Thought I was to die for You thought I was to die for You came So you sacrificed your life
keeping oh you clean me up inside thought I was to die for yes you did yes you did oh, oh. you thought I was to die for oh, oh. Good afternoon. Hey, look, we're so excited with New Birth Men's Ministry Locker Room tonight. I'm so excited that you guys are joining us. Could you just do me a favor? First and foremost, just start typing in the chat, Men's Locker Room. I want you to send this to every man in your household, every man on your timeline, every man on your Instagram feed, because tonight we're coming up with innovative strategies to go after the men of not just New Birth, but also the globe. Come on, let's pray real fast. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come now understanding, God, that we are on a heavenly assignment. God, we understand that heaven has dispatched heavenly warrants. And so we come as divine bounty hunters to go and get every man, to go and get every young child, to go and get every young boy. You said, Father, that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And so on tonight, God, order our steps. Order our steps, God. Put us in position so that we we can receive your poor. Raise up strong men of valor. Father, in the name of Jesus, we call every man in our family, from granddaddy to nephew, Father, right where they are, send your angels to every gang member on our street corners. We pull our little cousins. We pull our little brothers. We pull our wayward fathers, and we declare and decree that on tonight, miracles, signs, wonders, We'll find them in their bedrooms. We'll find them in their emails. We'll find them in their mailboxes. We just pray, God, that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that we don't have room to receive. God, we go after every man. The devil is a lie. We declare and decree, God, that you be God to every man in our family, not just the men at New Birth, not just the men in Atlanta, but all across the globe. Have your way tonight, and we'll be careful to give you all the honor, to give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, pretty girl, how you doing? You're very beautiful. Hey, fellas, would y'all come over here and join me for a second? My name is Philip Legrand, and I'm here to share some lifetime daily affirmations. I have my beautiful daughter and the fellas here with me. Can I share some good information with y'all? A. A. Avoid negative people, places, things, and bad habits. B. B. Believe in yourself. C. Consider things from every angle. D. D. Don't give up, don't give in, and don't let anything bring you down. E. e. Enjoy life today. Yes, it is gone, and tomorrow never come. F. F. Family and friends are hidden treasures. Talk to them and enjoy their riches. G. G. Give more than you plan to give each day. H. H. Hang on to your dreams. I. I. Ignore the gossip, a.k.a. the BS. J. J. Just do it. K. Keep on trying. No matter how hard it may seem, it will get better. L. L. Love yourself first and above all, love God always. M. M. Make it happen. N. N. Never let them see you sweat. O. O. Open your eyes and see everything around you. P. P. Practice makes improvement. Q. Q. Quit is never win and win is never quit. R. R. Relearn and study everything there is to know about your life. S. S. Stop procrastinating. T. T. Take control of your own destiny. U. U. Understand yourself first so you can better understand others. V. V. Visualize your dreams being a reality. W. W. Want it more than anything else. X. X. You already marked your spot on this earth. Y. Y. 
You are unique of all God's creations, and no one can ever replace you. Z. Z. Zero on your target, pray, and then go for it. Philip the fighter Legrand, dream of reality. Yeah. Keep God first, everything great to follow. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Deshaun Johnson here, the guru of apps. And me and these awesome gentlemen behind me, we're going to take you through a five-minute at-home body scoping the workout using only two water bottles. So without further ado, get ready to follow Ali. All right, fellas, let's take them to the top. The first exercise, we're going to do a shoulder press for 15. Out for 15, we're going to do a pec fly. All right, here we go, fellas. In three, two, one, let's go. Up, one. Up, two. Up, three. Up, four. Up, five. Up, six. Up, seven. Up, eight. Up, up, Six. last five, one, up, two, up, three, up, four, up. hold it, five. all right, fellas, when I count you down, we're going to bring it in for 15 once again, in three, two, one, let's go, in, one, in, two, in, three, in, four, in, five, in, six, in, seven, in, eight, in, nine, in, Last five. One. In. Two. In. Three. In. Four. In. Five. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so what we have, as you can see, we're using two water bottles. If you don't have water bottles, you can use canned goods, soda cans, any two innovative items that you feel comfortable holding in both hands. All right? So without further ado, let's go ahead and go into the next exercise. Fellas, let's get set. In three, two, one, let's go. Up. One. Up. Two. Up, three, up, four, up, five, up, six, up, seven, up, eight, up, nine, up, ten, last five, one, get ready to hold it, two, two up, three, up, four, hold it, in three, two, one, let's pull, pull, one, pull, two, pull, three, pull, Four, pull, five, pull, six, pull, seven, pull, eight, pull, nine, pull, ten, last five, one, pull, two, pull, three, pull, four, pull, and five. All right, so that exercise, ladies and gentlemen, you're working your back and your biceps, all right? So biceps inside of your arms, back. Go back, all right? So set your water bottles down, fellas. We're going to go to a final standing ab exercise, all right? So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to target your upper abs. Being your feet shoulder width apart, you're going to take your hands on your hips. You're going to go down, and you're going to come back up. Basic 15, all right? Here we go. In three, two, one, let's go. Down, one. Down, two. Down, three. Down, four. Down, five. Down, down, seven, down, eight, down, nine, down, ten, last five, one, down, two, down, three, down, three, down four, and five. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to give you our final exercise from the standard position, which is a lower ab exercise. On this exercise, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to hold your hands just up like so, okay? Take your alternating knees, knee up, down, up down. The concept is to lift your knee up above your waistline, high as you can, targeting everything you don't supposed to eat in the bottom of your core. All right, fellas, hands up. We're going to start with the left knee first. Up, down, up, one. We're going to do that 15 times, and that's a wrap for today's at-home body scoping and workout. Here we go. In three, two, right knee, let's go. Up, down, up, one. up, down, up, two, up, down, up, up, down, up, Four. up, down, up, Five. up, down, up, Six. up, down, up, Seven. up, down, up, Eight. up, down, up, Nine. up, down, up, Ten. up, down, up, Nine. up, down, up, Twelve. up, down, up, Three. up, down, up, Four. last one, stop, Five. give yourselves a hand, fellas. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for your at-home body scope to work out, we recommend you do this at least three times a week, 15 to 30 minutes is all you need, ladies and gentlemen, for a beginner's 
at home body scoping and workout. Listen, I told you that tonight was going to be incredible in the locker room. Now, I need you to put your hands back on the chat. I want you to tell me and tell the people who are around the world watching how we thank God for Minister Chris Hagan, who has blessed us with two incredible sections. I want you to help me thank God for our brother Devante, who prayed for us tonight. It's been absolutely amazing. I want you to thank God for Brother Philip. Our ABCD affirmation was off the chain. It's been absolutely phenomenal. And before we leave, there are some uh, strategies and some ideas and some concepts. I believe the Lord wants to share with you that are going to help you make some third quarter adjustments and finish this year strong. Now listen to this. In the book of Exodus, there's a passage of scripture that I'd like for you to look at. It's found in Exodus chapter number 17 at verse number 11. It says, as long as Moses held his hands up, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands got tired, they took a stone and put it under him for him to sit down on it. Aaron and her held his hands up, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady until the sun set and Joshua overcame the Amalekites. Now, let me tell you how this works. If you're taking some notes tonight, I want you to call your third quarter strategy, put a little title on it, and call it Crosses and Crutches. That's the name of the play I'm going to teach you how to run tonight, all right? Y'all ready? Crosses and crutches. Let's do it like this. God, stand up in us and help us teach a man. Now, it was July the 2nd, 1776, when Benjamin Franklin was quoted as saying, either we will hang together or we will surely hang separately. Ben Franklin was one of the original signers of the Declaration of Independence, and he understood that because his name was written on that document, he didn't become free, and our nation didn't get its liberation simply because he signed his name, but instead, and in fact, on July the 4th, they would have to fight a bloody revolution in order to win the freedom they claim that they desire. Of course, as American citizens, and certainly as African-American men, we understand that you don't become a man simply because you declare it. You become a man because you are willing to fight for it. Manhood is not an event that happens to us because we've reached a certain age or graduated past a certain stage. Manhood comes because you are willing to fight the battles that are required to define your identity in a world that wants to call you everything except what you are. I wonder, am I preaching to some men in the locker room who've had to fight some battles to become the man you wanted to be? You've had to fight some battles to raise your children. You've had to fight some battles to protect your marriage. You've had to fight a couple of battles in order to grow your finances. And you realize that what manhood looks like for us is not because we say we are men, but because we are able to get on the battlefield and defend our honor, protect our families, nurture the God truth in us, and that's what makes us men. This is what we see happening when Moses is talking to Joshua in Numbers, in Exodus chapter number 17. Moses is teaching Joshua all of the strategies that are required for him to be successful as a leadership quality man. He says to Joshua in the story that we are reading, you take a couple of strong men and go down in the battle to fight. He is helping Joshua to understand that sometimes manhood requires you to be willing to fight for it. But what you are going to fight will sometimes surprise you. Sometimes you'll fight your enemy. Other times you'll fight your own brothers. 
other times you'll fight your neighbors. And there will even be times when you have to fight your own friends. But the truth of the matter is, you can never become a man until you are willing to stand your ground and defend what God told you you were supposed to have. I happen to be one who agrees. I'm glad Moses sent Joshua down in the valley. You can't get your freedom unless you're willing to go fight for it. I happen to agree with Moses. You cannot let the next generation become a leader until you put them on the front side and front line and let them go for what they know. I happen to agree with Moses. Sometimes the old guard has to stand on the top of the hill and let the young soldiers go down in the valley and do what they do to win for the next generation. I agree with everything Moses does until we reach the point where Moses goes to the top of the hill. I disagree with Moses. He gets to the top of the hill, and instead of talking like he did down in the valley, he takes Aaron and her up on the mountain and strangely closes his mouth. It doesn't make any sense to me. When he was teaching Joshua what manhood looks like, he gives him a perfect example. Then he goes to the top of the mountain and forgets everything he says. He gets to the top of the mountain. He doesn't talk to anybody. He doesn't say another word after he gives Joshua his instructions. He stands at the top of the mountain, and for some reason or another, he never asks for help when the stress of manhood begins to come down on his shoulders. Why did Moses keep his mouth shut? He had Aaron there, he had her there, but he doesn't say a mumbling word. Why does Moses keep his mouth shut? He's dealing with the pressure that come with the wrong version of manhood. You know what the wrong version of manhood looks like? It's the version where you put your ego in the front instead of putting your real self in the front. And because you, Mr. Man, have convinced everybody that you are the big shot. You are the rich guy. You are the smartest one in the room. When the normal pressures that all men have to deal with come to knock on your door, you can't say anything to anybody because you've convinced everybody how great you are. Moses is standing at the top, but he can't ask for help because all he's ever shown them is that I'm the latest and the greatest inspiration. I need to make sure that some people I am preaching to today understand that there's a difference between who you say you are and who you really are. And you don't become a real man until you become comfortable enough asking somebody else to help you in those moments when you inevitably become weak. Let me see if I can take a quick opinion poll. Am I preaching to anybody in who's in this room who's ever had to ask somebody else for some help? That doesn't make you weak. That doesn't make you soft. That makes you a full-grown man. Moses is standing at the top of the mountain, and he begins to experience the inevitable tiredness that comes from being a man who's a leader. The Bible says that his arms begin to get tired. I'm going to give you the opportunity to do something that you haven't done in the last 10 years. I want you to open your mouth, and I want you to say it out loud, my arms are getting tired. I want you to open your mouth and tell your neighbor, my arms are tired. I'm tired of having to pay all the bills. I'm tired of having to be the bigger person. I'm tired of having to be the one who always fixes the problems. Everybody looks at me like I never get tired. I need you to open your mouth and I need you to shout once and for all, my arms are getting tired. Moses has his arms getting tired, and that's a real big problem because as long as his arms are up, the children in the valley are winning 
But when his arms get tired and begin to fall down, they begin to lose the battle. And at that very moment, even though he doesn't open his mouth, Aaron and her begin to come in and hold his arms up like crutches. Here's your strategy for the third quarter of the year. When you get tired and when you run out, when you feel weak and it seems like you can't make it, I need you to look for God to send you some crutches to come in on your left and your right to help you deal with what you were dealing with. They come and they stand beside him like crutches. Somebody help me preach. Open up your mouth and shout crutches. Let me give you a couple of crutches that you can use when you come out the locker room. The Bible says that Moses took his hands off the situation and lifted his hands up toward the air. Your first crutch is to take your hands off so God can put his hands on. If God's got it, you don't need to touch it. Somebody tell your neighbor, lift your hands. In the middle of your headache, lift your hands. In the middle of your stress, just lift your hands. In the middle of the argument, close your mouth and lift your hands. Somebody open up your mouth and shout, lift your hands. When they lifted up his hands, they stood behind him, a rock. And Moses begins to lean back on the rock. My name's not Fat Joe. I'm a gospel preacher, but I got one good point to help you today. When you get tired and you can't make it, I need you to remember that the rock is standing behind you and all you got to do is lean back. Somebody give your neighbor a high five and tell them Jesus is behind you. Lean back. When the money runs out and your friends walk out and your loved ones turn their back away, when there's no one else I can go to, somebody lift your hands and tell them I can go to the rock. He put a rock behind Moses and when the rock was behind him, he leaned back on the rock and found what he needed to keep on keeping on. Now I notice one interesting point. I'm going to share this one with you and bid you farewell. Moses was a strong guy. And as long as his hands were up in the air like this, he was standing in his own strength. It didn't take anything for him to praise God as long as he found some strength. But eventually, the cross he had to carry begins to weigh on him and he can't stand in his own strength anymore his arms are getting tired and he's not standing like this but now he stretches out in that familiar position that we've seen Jesus stand in with his arms stretched out can I tell somebody that as long as your arms are straight up in the air you don't need Jesus but when your cross gets too heavy and your arms fall out to the side, that's when Jesus says, I can hang in there with you. Maybe I'm preaching to somebody who's carried across the first three quarters of this year. And you can testify with me that when your arms got heavy, that's when Jesus hung in there with you. The Bible says that he hung there from the sixth to the ninth hour. The Bible says that he hung there until the sun would refuse to shine. The Bible says that he hung there until the moon blushed red and drops of blood fell down. And if he, it hung there for him, I need you to remember that as long as your arms are stretched out doing what God asked you to do, Jesus, yes, is going to hang in there with you. You ought to take a moment, put your hands together, and tell God thank you that when it got rough, he hung in there with me. When it got tough, he hung in there with me. When I thought I wouldn't make it, he hung in there with me. Maybe I can get a witness. Isn't he a company keeper? Isn't he a heavy load bearer? Isn't he a heavy load sharer? Somebody say, thank God you hung in there with me. 
thank God you didn't come down from the cross and because you hung there I can hang there he can hang there we can hang there somebody tell God thank you that you hung in there on the cross we give him glory that he hung there and didn't come down I need to let you know for every cross you have to bear Jesus Christ is the crutches you need to maintain your posture and for the remainder of this year instead of trying to do it in your own strength why don't you surrender to the weight and let Jesus hang in the fight with you wherever you are I want to invite you to build a relationship with the Jesus we've been preaching about tonight. Can I do that, fellas? Every head is bowed. Every eye is closed. God, I thank you that you sent us Jesus to bear our crosses with us. And I pray that for every man watching tonight, they would receive the help of our Holy Spirit to carry their cross. In Jesus' name, amen. Now look at the bottom of the screen. You're going to see ways you can contact our ministry. I want you to do that. And you, my friend, have a helper who sticks closer than a brother. Fellas, put your hands together and thank God for Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. Did you guys not just enjoy that? Man, I'm telling you, our locker room experience, Elder Sailor preached an amazing word. We're so grateful for him. Listen, you will not want to leave this program without giving. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, all of our ways to give here at New Birth are there. And you want to sow into this ministry so that we can continue to edify the kingdom by bringing in men. Ain't that right? Y'all yes, know men belong in the church too, right? All right, listen. At the bottom of the screen, you see all of our ways to give. I want you to sow. Sow into new birth. Sow into this ministry. If you want to see more men at your worship, your worship facility, more experiences like this, I dare you to sow into this ministry. Did you, we just had a good time, man. Like We just we shot ball. We played. We lifted weights. It was just such an amazing experience. I can't wait for other men to join this ministry. You guys got to connect with us. Like, share, and send this broadcast. Don't just tell them to watch it, but you also got to connect. All right. I'm looking forward to seeing you the next time we get into the locker room. I'm praying that your third quarter be the best quarter that you've had this entire game. I'm out.
a new birth. Get ready for today's video announcements. Our Tuesday evening group therapy sessions will be virtual for a few more weeks, but we are in the building every Sunday. We love to see you worshiping in the presence of the Lord and fellowshipping with the saints. Congratulations to our very own Call to Conquer bookstore as our business of the month. This well-deserved honor was bestowed on Call to Conquer as they have consistently provided ministry support, offering books, Bibles, apparel, gifts, and much more to the church and community. Don't miss this month's sale on Bibles, children's books, and new birth apparel. Also, please plan to attend our virtual Book of the Month Club meetings held on the last Tuesday of every month. My name is Jasmine Byrne. My name is Monique and I'm a member of New Birth. And on August 28th, I will be getting baptized and be dedicating my life back to Christ. I got baptized when I was younger, but now as an adult, I want to rededicate myself back to the Lord to have a closer relationship with Him. I am really, really excited. I made this decision on my own to open up new doors and to receive everything that God has for me. I'm excited for what life will be like after I get baptized. Get ready for our baptism bash on Sunday, August 28th after our worship service. Baptism represents the forgiveness and cleansing from sin that comes through faith in Jesus Christ. We have a special day planned just for you and your entire family. It will be a day of celebration, fellowship, food trucks, and renewal. Please text NB Baptism to 71441 to register to be baptized. All are welcome. Come out and enjoy the fun and festivities. New Birth, Sunday, August 28th is Tithing Sunday. We set aside this day to honor God with a tenth of what He has blessed us with. Malachi 3.10 teaches us to bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord God Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much of a blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Make the commitment to honor God with your tithe today. You can't be God at giving. And that's going to conclude today's video 